Coming up on Bees in the Shed, we reveal our plans for a million subscriber meetup, talk about our epic day on the tracks with American YouTube channel Donut, plus we also answer some of your questions about where we've been from checking out the Bathurst 1000 to build updates, massive trips and heaps more. Well, g'day folks, welcome back to another episode of Beers in the Shed. You know, here's a little factual topic for you. The last time I did a Beers in the Shed, I was in a very large shed on the other side of the country in America with Sean O in the Land Cruiser factory. Today we have got some pretty cool topics to go over and I'm going to be sharing the stage, or the shed I should say, with a very good friend who I'm actually catching up with in a week or so in Adelaide. Jocko, are you there, mate? Hey, I am, mate. How are you? I, you know, I'm, I'm well, mate. I'm well. I thought about you when I was in uh, in the States in that Land Cruiser museum because oh. I reckon you would have been sliding all over the floor the amount of drool that would have been coming out of you, mate. Mate, I, it's funny you say that because I've actually been to that Land Cruiser museum as well with some mates in January and it was it's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely it is. incredible yeah. place. Yeah. We need one. We need one for Nissans, mate, although I think most of the <clears> Nissans are still out in the tracks being driven. They wouldn't, they're not going to sit in a museum. No. That's not something a Nissan would do. Unfortunately, mate, uh, they'd all be sold for to pea platers to uh, use on Blacksmith Beach, so they, they wouldn't actually, be able to be any kept in the museum actually pretty anymore. True. It's actually pretty true, mate. It's pretty true. Of course, today yep. we've got lots to discuss, and I'm excited to get into it, mate, because things have been happening, haven't they? And I think one of the biggest things that's happened this year that we've sort of been counting down, we sort of knew it was going to happen, but it's it hit us a bit sooner than we thought, and it's a bit of a milestone, mate. In fact... I'm going to give the uh, I'm going to give the honours over to you, mate. What has just happened that is monumental, mate? Lots of things. I, I went on a date once. That that was one. Oh, but, oh, get, I, get out of here, <laughs> you crazy bugger! <laughs> In any case, mate, the, the other probably bigger and more important thing that happened was we hit one million subscribers on YouTube. Yep, a million. Yep, it's a heck of a lot, mate. So to get that to a million a subscribers, it's it's. It's bloody phenomenal, to be honest. <laughs> but a million subscribers, how ins- like that is crazy when you think about yeah. like when the fact that we're just a couple of normal Aussie blokes having a crack yep. getting out there in our four drives and showing you guys how you can do it as well. It's pretty crazy that uh, we're at a million subscribers and we're not stopping as well. It's already it's already no. gone past a million and it's and it's counting up from there. So who knows? Who knows where we'll who go? Who knows where it's going to mean? Exactly, mate. Exactly. But a million is. I I feel like it's one of those milestones that you can't just let pass by. I feel. You crack a beer and celebrate, sure, but shouldn't you be cracking a beer and celebrating with the million subscribers? Does that make sense? I agree, mate. I agree because, I mean, it's thanks to you guys watching and and following Mm -hmm. and liking and subscribing to all our videos that we are able to do what we do and and get these videos out to you. So, mate, I reckon that's actually probably a pretty good idea. Maybe organise like a a meetup or or something like that? Uh, I reckon... I mean, it's a a hard thing to organise, mate, when you think about the logistics of it, but I reckon somewhere that everyone could be invited to for maybe, you know, maybe a couple of nights camp out. Um, yeah, that could be cool. Where do, where do you reckon we a, do it with, I mean, like a, maybe not a million people would rock up, but I reckon a fair few people, if you gave them a good spot, would uh, would pop up. Maybe maybe Sean could shout them all a beer or something like that. But um, well, I reckon the more we get, the better that shout would be. But I reckon what we need to do is two things, mate. If we're thinking about this, we need to give people plenty of time to plan. And I think it needs to be somewhere that is, is iconic, you know, is going to yeah, be a road trip yeah, yeah. to get to. Maybe um, like I know the high country or some or high maybe country. Even Cape York. Yeah, what about yeah. what about Cape York? Cape York would be epic. How about how about the top of Big Red? Yep, that could also be another one too. That mate, there are plenty of options to uh, to there organize are. this 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 meetup. But I reckon we're onto something here. A million subscriber meetup. Yep, camping some beers that Sean's got <laughs> Sean's got to shout everyone a beer if you rock <laughs> We've up. We've thrown him under the bus there. So I guess, uh, as, as you can probably tell, we're just kind of playing this on the fly. But, um, mate, yep. I reckon we do some kind of meetup. And, and where it is, yeah. we don't really know yet, but we will work it out. And I reckon that would be awesome because, it's as I mentioned before, it's thanks to you guys at home that we're able to do yeah. this. And, uh, you know, it would be a good opportunity to say thanks to you guys and, and yeah, buy you a beer or, or a couple and have a camp or, out or, at the same couple- time. How about this for an idea, mate? If we're mm-hmm. going to do this, why, because it was the million subscribers that got us to this point, why don't we let them decide? Where we're going to go? Perfect. Like, what perfect. do you and I know? We wouldn't have yeah, a clue. Why don't we? Let, that's true. Why don't we let a million people describe where they yeah. want to go for this meetup? Chuck it in the comments below. Where do you think this meetup should be? Yep. A million people, a camp out somewhere in Australia. In the comments down below. Let us know where you want to go because that is going to be probably the hottest thing happening in 2024, mate. That's insane, mate. I still haven't gotten over the fact we hit a million. So um, yeah, Crazy. I'm excited for this meetup, mate. Wherever it is, yep. I reckon it is going to be. Epic. So as soon as, I, as soon as I guess once we determine when we're going to do it, people yep. want to put that date in their calendars real quick and, and start planning that dream trip, mate. 
So watch this space. Now, Jocko, we've just said it's been a huge, it's been a huge year, made a million subscribers. We've done trips all around the country and we're still doing trips around the country. You just did something pretty special with Sean o, um, over on the East Coast, mate. I, I didn't sort of have much to do with it. I've seen a few photos and a couple of little sneak peek videos. What was that all about? Mate, I did. I did something very special. There's a uh, little YouTube channel from the United States. Uh, you may have heard of them called Donut Media. Uh, little, they've got, you know, over 8 million subscribers. These boys do something. 8 some million. Yeah, they do a cracking job with their videos um, and, you know, they've, they've filmed some really cool stuff and they decided to come over to Australia and see what the uh, vehicle scene over here was all about and, boy, did they turn it up, mate. So we decided, it was a couple of the boys, we had, uh, we had Jeremiah and, and Zach uh, and, of course, we had young Jimmy as well coming out and, mate, we decided to take them and show them a bit of what Australian four-wheel driving is like. So uh, where else do you do that? Of course, you do it in the Wadigan State Forest, mate. So... Um, we wanted to show them because in the States, right, you've got so yep. many amazing places to explore. You know, one thing that they pretty much can't do over there, which I didn't know what's, until they told me, what's that? is drive a vehicle on a beach. That's just like a, a foreign really? thing to those guys. They said it's really hard to do over there. So we thought, wow. heck, a bush to beach trip for an Australian four-wheel driver is almost a birthright, I reckon. So yep. Um, yep. What we did is we met up in the Wattos and, and showed them a couple of tough tracks in there and, and showed them how to all gave them a drive of the vehicles. We took the pony, we took Sooty, and we took Daryl. Oh, you took I Daryl. Did. Okay, so you did take something halfway decent with you for the boys. Well, see, this is the funny thing you say that, mate, because no one wanted to drive Daryl. They, they wanted to drive the pony and they wanted to drive Sooty. But, uh, but yeah, poor Jesse right. had to pretty much wheel Daryl the whole time. Jimmy did give it a go, but uh, yep. I think we put the fear of the Lord into him on some of those hills, and, uh, <laughs> that, but they had a ball, had an absolute ball. And then, of course, once we finished in the Wattos, we took them down to the beach, mate, and uh, Zach was driving the pony. I was, <laughs> I was riding shotgun for a bit, and he was frothing. It was really cool to see. And, I mean, these guys are a big deal, and the fact they came out wheeling with us was, was pretty awesome. A bunch of top blokes as well. And uh, I think that that episode mm -hmm. for uh, their American adventure, because they, they didn't just come here for us, mate. As much as, <laughs> as, much as what I just said would leave you to believe they... They yeah. came here for, to, to basically check out the car scene in Australia. That's not just four-wheel mm -hmm. drives. That's, you know, performance cars and stuff. And, you know, they came over here and, and really dived headfirst into the Australian, you know, four-wheel drive and performance vehicle scene. And I reckon they saw some nice. pretty cool stuff. And it was an absolute oh, pleasure sick. to uh, to take them into the bush, you know, just for a day and, of course, onto the beach. But um, I'm keen to see that, mate. Their episode's coming out very soon. And, and oh, uh, cool. you'll see me and Sean mucking around in some cars with them. So... Top bunch of blokes, and who knows? Maybe, maybe when we get over to the states one day, we can uh, we can muck around uh, over their side of the pond, mate, and see what happens. That was awesome, dude. Thank you. Oh my god, ear to ear smile. Oh, that's sick. That was great. Given that you own probably one of the most underpowered vehicles I've ever seen, uh, Bathurst. Yeah, mate. Yeah, how, we how, so, <laughs> did you go out there? I just got back from Bathurst. We we went up there to, to watch the. Uh, Repco Bathurst 1000, mate, and uh, it was awesome. We had yep. so much fun and uh, we got to see, you know, a lot of people who like that sort of stuff, just because you're into performance cars or four-wheel drivers doesn't mean you can't like both. And uh, cool. what yeah. we were quite surprised with, mate, was how many four-wheel drivers were out there camping, watching the great race, and we got to able, we were able to go up and, uh, you know, have a chat to a lot of them, say good day to a bunch of yep. people. So it was a real awesome experience and very thankful we got to uh, got to do it. And See the race as well. It was nice seeing some cars with horsepower for once, mate. It's a, it's a, it's a foreign concept for me. But, yeah, there's, there's I think something like 7,000 camp spots available or something Whoa. something ridiculous. Don't quote me on that oh exact number, but people were camped up to watch the race. And, of course, a lot of those guys have four-wheel drive. So um, if we saw you at Bathurst, uh, thanks for saying good day. And who knows, mate, hopefully we'll be able to get back there next year. Um, but I was told I wasn't allowed to enter the pony, though. So, um yeah. Well, you're still waiting it. for it to get a lap in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking but, of things with huge amounts of power, mate, how's, mm -hmm. that, how's that red Hilux of yours come along? Uh, Last yes, time well, you sent me a photo of it, holy heck, looked like it had a fair way to go. It, 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 it does. And, and a general theme with me is I, I literally right now, um, I mean, the pony's behind me, I'm doing some work on that, and the, uh, the yep. N70's just to the right of me here. Um, they're all getting work done at the moment. My other cars, the, the Red Lux and the South Lux, are all apart at home. So... Um, Mate, I do not have a running four-wheel drive right now, but the Red Lux oh, really? in particular, we are just pretty much finished all the panel work and body work on it, so you guys will be seeing that real soon because what we've got to do, mm -hmm. mate, of course, Damien, as you know, is an absolute master yep. of his craft and he was able to he show yep. um, you know, a whole bunch of tips and tricks for panel beating and rust repair that we went through on mm -hmm. the cab, so that episode's coming out real soon and the cab's starting to look real straight, mate, really straight. The tub's got a bit more Beautiful. work. 
And then yep. uh, after that, it's time to get her in a booth and get her, get her painted up, mate. And then once I do that, then I can reassemble it, then I can put the engine in, and then I can make a drive and wire up the engine. So as you, as you <laughs> said at the start, there is lots more to be done on that, but um, we're yep. just getting a little bit closer each time we work on it, and it's mm-hmm. starting to... I wouldn't say it's starting to come together, but it's, you know, it's starting to look nice. So uh, I'm really excited for that one, mate. It's going to be a beautiful car when it's done. Let's, we've pretty much in this last thing, it's been the Festival of Jock talking about what I've been up to. What I want to know now is you've been just as busy as me. Talk us yeah, through it, mate. Yeah. What, where, have you, where have you been? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> it's been, um, I've been as busy as a beaver, mate. I, uh, I, I haven't been home much uh, once we finished up. Oh, America. We, we haven't talked much about you and I in America because... We only sort of uh, crossed paths for one one romantic night out we, in America. We did, um, we did, mate. You took the, the big old Jeep and went off on another couple of weeks' adventures um, when I got home. So we sort of, we where did we meet? Salt Lake City, I think it was? We met in Salt Lake City, mate, in Utah. That's right. And uh, yeah, yep. you basically threw the keys at me and said, here you go, enjoy. And, uh, go and have fun, yeah. Enjoy, yeah. I did, mate. It was amazing. I'm sure we'll get onto that uh, a little bit later, but um, it was, it was as you know, you drove the Jeep on the Rubicon Trail, which, which yep. just went up. Um, yep. And then, and of course, you had an absolute ball. I can see it. I can yeah. see the smile on your face when you're driving that thing with Pete. Um, yeah, it was, it was so much fun, man. Yeah. It was so and, much fun. I had just as much fun in that. That car was the most capable vehicle I've ever driven. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. It blew my mind. It was, um, if, 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 look, if I was a young man and I was starting out in this, in this game again and I wanted primarily to drive hard tracks, that was my jam. That's what I wanted to do. I'd go straight out and get a Jeep. Those yeah, things mate. will outwheel just about anything. Look, I'm going to find it hard to disagree with you there. I'd probably do the yeah. same. I think I would say if I was going to be wheeling some of the real hard tracks here in Australia, you'd probably have to upgrade a fair few things. Like, um, Of course you would, yeah. Particularly yeah. driveline components, as you do with any vehicle when you're wheeling anything, hard. Yep. But, um, mate, yep. yeah, I was I was blown away. And, of course, I took the Jeep to, to Moab, as you did in the Rubicon Trail, got to wheel it there. I was lucky enough to drive it around Moab in particular, which is yep. – uh, you guys will see that soon because it was amazing, absolutely amazing. And – uh I can't wait, mate. I can't wait for the for the guys to see that one, for the team to see that one, because it's going to be unreal. Now, from uh, from one end of the spectrum straight to the other, mate. I've been um, just frothing on touring at the moment. Touring. I, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's it doesn't quite get the same recognition that the tough tracks do. But I've just spent the last six weeks or so out bush mm-hmm. doing a Flinders Rangers trip. That mm-hmm. I it's weird. I'm about to say something a bit controversial here, folks. South Australia has utterly blown me away in what it offers the touring four-wheel driver. And I'm going to say this. I don't think there's any other state in Australia except Western Australia that has the scope for touring that South Australia has. I came from a, a place out in the Flinders called Bendelby or Bendelby Ranges, which is mm-hmm. sort of to the yep. southern half of the Flinders Ranges. Mate, they have got tracks out there that will put the wind up you. Utterly uh-huh. hardcore, gnarly, gnarly tracks that, if you get them wrong... You're rolling down the edge of a cliff and you won't stop to hit the bottom. It is one of the gnarliest places I've been to. And then when you leave Bendelby, utterly beautiful spot, the Flinders themselves, the camping and the driving you can do out there, mate, oh, blew my, it stunning, literally blew stunning. my mind. It was, it was stunning, man. It was absolutely stunning. And then from there, uh, we did a bit of a trip that was on my bucket list for a long time. We followed the Darling and the Murray Rivers right from their mm-hmm. source all mm-hmm. the way through to where it starts, camping out in that, that, that country out there with the big white ghost gums on the rivers. It was, oh, beautiful. dude. That part of Australia is, again, under underrated. And I'm not trying to get the hordes of people to go out there. I don't want that to happen. But I tell you what, if you're trying to escape the crowds, think outside the box and try some of these other places, a bit inland, and I tell you, you won't regret it. Utterly stunning, man. The Darling River and the Murray River, unbelievable. Well, mate, firstly, I'm excited to, to see all that stuff that you just described. Sounds epic. And for me, uh, I love, you know, pointing my nose up a tough track just as much as I like doing the big Ks and, and rolling out a swag. Yeah. Like the Simpson Desert's another prime example Simo, of, a, yeah. of a yeah. trip, you know, you and I just absolutely adored. And I don't think I drove up a single rock that whole time, but I did 8,000 no, kilometres of outback Australia and it was sensational. So I agree yeah. with you, mate. Yep, yep. No, mm. it's good to see, you, mate. We are so bloody lucky to live in a country that allows us to either drive vertical rock faces or up a beach that no one's been up for 10 years, mate. I think we are, we are a bloody lucky bunch of people. We've really got it all, haven't we? Definitely, mate, definitely. And, uh, yeah, speaking of what, I'm, what we've got coming up, uh, yep. I have a busy next couple of months, mate. Um, we're off to the Vic High Country soon, which I'm really looking yep. forward to. Uh, and Tasmania is going to be thrown in there as well. I've got more yeah. work to do on the Red Lux, so I've got to get back down there. Yeah, there's much to be done. I've got cars to build. I've got places to see, and uh, <laughs> I can't wait, mate. This is going to be epic. 
It's been a big year and we've still got a heck of a lot of it to go. Now, folks, we uh, we asked you guys if you had any questions you wanted us to sort of answer. We thought we'd get a couple of questions. I thought my mum might ask one. Your mum might, I don't know. But we yeah, got absolutely yep. inundated with questions, mate. So I reckon, with no further ado, let's get stuck into your Q&A. Well, mate, we've got a couple of questions here from a few people on YouTube. Uh, yep. Is the Jeep going to Australia and is this beast Jeep coming to uh, back to Australia or are we going to sell it in the US, mate? Well, uh, I guess we can both answer this one. It's I'm tricky, gonna go isn't it? Because, of... yeah, go on, you go first, mate. Well, I was going to say that vehicle is left-hand drive. It does belong in the United yeah. States. So I don't <laughs> see yeah. that it will come over to Australia. But what I would say is after driving one, if I ever got the opportunity to build one in Australia, I absolutely would. Uh, I yeah. don't know I don't know about you, mate, but I, I reckon you'd probably say something pretty similar. I think, yeah, I was going to mirror exactly what you said there, mate. She's a left-hand drive and it's, uh, it's, it's terrifying enough to drive without it coming over here and being on the opposite side of the road with the steering wheel where it shouldn't be, if you get what I'm getting at. So I think mm -hmm. it probably does belong on the tracks in the USA. Uh, so it would probably be left over there. That said, like you've just said, of course, if we could replicate a build, something similar over here in, in Australia, I'd love to be involved in that. Because honestly, man, sure. I, I am a died in the wool four-wheel drive owner. I don't care what four-wheel drive you own, and I don't care what you do with it, as long as it doesn't sit in your shed and rot away. So mm -hmm. thus, whilst I own Nissans and love them through and through, that Jeep turned my head around, man. I honestly believe it is the most capable vehicle I could possibly drive. I unless you would have put mate. me, yeah, unless you would have put me in how, was those, uh, how are those uh, comp truck buggy things we drove in Sydney, mate? Oh, Unless yeah, you were to put yeah, me yeah. in one of yep. those, they're their next level with, with rear steer, et cetera, et cetera. But for something that you can drive the kids to school in and then go and drive Moab or the Rubicon, it's, crazy. Crazy. it's, it's, it's wild, man. It's, it's, it's next level. So if we could replicate that here in Australia, I'd be all, for, all about that for sure, mate. All about Definitely, that. Definitely, mate. And, and uh, I would say that we're not done with that Jeep yet. So uh, you'll just have to wait no. and see what we've got planned coming up next. Because, mate, America Definitely. was so much fun. Uh, I think we're going to have to head back over there and do more. But uh, Do more? Yeah. I've got a question um, here, mate. It's uh, for you. I think this one is for you, mate. Um, this mm -hmm. is from About Time. Uh, welcome to the USA, boys, from a fellow Jeeper. Great to have you here and can't wait to see your wheel in our homeland. Well, mate, they're all coming up um, About Time. He's got a question for you, Jocko. He's curious, cu he's not curious, he's curious as to what gear ratio we put in the Jeep. Ah, excellent question. So, mate, we left the gear ratios alone in that thing. We only put 35s on it and uh, left it standard and it was fine. It, um, yeah, drove everything we needed to. I think if we went bigger tyres, you'd probably look at changing the gear ratios there, but uh, yep. it did everything yep. we needed to. Of course, it was a Rubicon, so it was factory twin locked. And uh, yep. yeah, mate, we pretty much left them alone. We checked everything, made sure all the bearings and stuff were all squared away, but uh, yeah. Left it alone. Otherwise, she just otherwise she just did her job, didn't she? She was a she was a remarkable beastie. It, uh, yeah, like I say, I've said it many times, and I'll leave it right there. But it blew me Big away, time. mate. It really Couldn't did. Agree more. It really Couldn't did. Couldn't agree more. This will be right up your alley. We're gonna go. We're gonna go Hilux versus Tacoma, mate. We've got Mark and also Eric. Want to know what are your opinions on the Tacomas off road? Uh, and how does it? They're hard to say that word Tacoma. It sounds like taco, like something a you taco. Uh, well, how does it compare? Them, <laughs> they do. How does it compare to the Hilux, mate? Ah, well, controversial. So, controversial. Yeah, this is a controversial one, mate, but I'm going to say uh, a couple of things. Firstly, mm -hmm. I would say that in terms of strength and in one area in particular, and of course, I'm referring to the Tacomas we have, which I think are the, the third gen ones. The, yep. the chassis on them is, is C channel, whereas on, um, ah. on our Hilux and stuff, it's boxed in, so it's much stronger. Boxy, yep. I would say this, though, mate, whilst I think that in the series of Tacoma that we were wheeling with, I think it was the Gen 3, doesn't have as strong a chassis as the Hilux, where the Tacoma did have a lot better strength and aftermarket support was in their uh, upper and lower control arms, their stronger CVs, um, stronger mm -hmm. sub-axles, everything, steering racks as well. They can put in bolt-in kits that upgrade steering racks from, from larger vehicles and stuff like that. So um, yep. Tacomas, I think, have a lot of lot more aftermarket support to, to make them stronger for driving some of the tracks they've got over there. Um, yep, yep. I personally think that if I was to go toe to toe with a Tacoma with my highlights, I reckon I'd probably give one a run for its money. But I'm probably going to eat my words there because we saw some wild, amazingly built Tacomas when we were over there. And, uh, you yep. know, big diffs under them, big Dana 60s, big tyres and stuff like that. So, so, so what I'm getting at is my highlights would probably end up getting left behind. I think. The Tacomas that we had, you'd need to upgrade them a fair bit to make them real tough. And of course, Dylan and, and uh, the mule Tacoma that Timmy was driving, they were really well built, really well put together. 
Yep. I yep. know my Hilux is better, so I'd probably stick with the Hilux, but um, there's one other, other thing I think that Tacoma's probably beat a Hilux on, and it would be in looks. The front end of those things looks way tougher and way cooler than I think what they we do get look, here in Australia yeah. currently. Um, so yep. if I was to put my money on it, I think just because I know them, I'd probably say I'd prefer a Hilux, but uh, if yep. I was a local in the US, mate, I uh, think I'd be driving around in Tacoma for sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those things you sort of, it's a bit like it's a bit like the Jeep saga in Australia. We sort of think they're a bit of a weaker vehicle over here. They drive line issues, you know, they, don't, they break down a bit more. But the fact of the matter is we don't have the support they have in the States. In the States, mm. you can pick up every single thing and upgrade it easily off the show, off, off a, going to a factory, into a shop and buy whatever you need for a Jeep and upgrade it. You can't do that here. So yeah. thus, it gets a bit of a bad name here. The same, I guess, with Tacomas over here versus over there. If it breaks, you go. You, you put a bigger thing on. It's as simple as that. That's why they're so uh, underrated. Exactly, over here, mate. Exactly. As opposed like, to over there. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many. There's so much availability for for upgraded yep. bolt-in parts. I think is a big thing. Exactly. That's, that's what support, I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is the aftermarket Definitely. support for their vehicles over there is far greater. Um, so that's where a Tacoma would wipe the floor with a Hilux, I think. But um, look, you know yep. me, mate. I've got a few of them. It's pretty hard to ever get me out of the seat of a Hilux. <laughs> but agreed, I, could mate, be, agreed. I could be convinced. I could be convinced, yeah. mate. I can um, see you in a taco. Jocko, we've had heaps of questions about the US. Mm -hmm. We've got one here from Justin. He wants to know uh, if we've got any future plans for the US. I guess that's one start to the question. And if we do, is the East Coast on our radar? Well, mate, uh, I'm going to answer that in two parts. So the first part, do we have any future plans? Yes, we absolutely do. We will be going back to the US for sure, mate. And mm -hmm. that kind of leads into the second question. The reason for that is there are so many more places to explore. We barely even scratched the surface. I think we did yep. less than barely scratching the surface, mate, when it comes to what yep. you can explore in the US there. There's so many amazing places to see. And uh, the East Coast, mate, if there's some some awesome stuff out there, which I'm sure there is, maybe we'll be getting over there one day. I don't think straight away, but uh, who knows? Eventually, it'd be cool to maybe work our way across the country and see what we can find because uh, cool. if the tracks we've got anything to go by, there will be yeah, plenty well, more to yeah. explore. Why don't we use the power of the people here, mate? If you're in the US right now and you live on the East Coast and you're into Perfect. your wheeling, let us know in the comments down below, where should we go? Because we're mm -hmm. not from there. We wouldn't have a clue. So yeah. in the comments down below, if you've done a bit of wheeling on the East Coast. Or anywhere. Of the anywhere, US of, anywhere. in the middle of America. Where, like, let us hey, know. what about Canada? We, Can we go up north? Anywhere. Worldwide. Full drive 24 7 worldwide, <laughs> mate. Let's go everywhere. Let's do all, all okay. of it. <laughs> Sick. Let us know, where should we be going? And where should we wheel next? Heck, it's no longer just about Australia. We can do the planet. Well, mm -hmm. maybe. Maybe the planet. We, we should probably restrict it to the planet, mate. I don't know about Mars. Maybe. That could be quite Yeah, tricky. maybe some, some moon wheeling, some moon rocks. Yeah, I have moon. driven moon rock, mate, but it was in Lithgow. It wasn't on the moon. So, so Not uh, quite yeah, the same. <laughs> Moving on, coming back over to uh, our little island home. Uh, we've got a question yep. here in relation to Arnhem Land. Um, oh, yes, Arnhem Land. Yeah, Michael Rowe said, looks great, but why so many permits? Michael, that is that is a million dollar question, mate, and it's a hot topic on its own. Um, it took me a little bit by surprise. I haven't been back to Arnhem Land for nearly 10 years, so it was sort of a decade in between trips for me. When I first went out there, you needed two permits. One you got before you even went to Arnhem Land, and that was to drive the Arnhem Highway, and you got that online. It took about 30 seconds, literally. Then when you got to Arnhem Land, you just got yourself a permit to carry alcohol, and that was just so that you didn't, um, you know, carry alcohol into Aboriginal communities where you weren't allowed to. Very, very simple process, and then off you went, and you enjoyed what Arnhem Land had to offer, and by goodness, it has got a lot to offer now. Things have changed ever so slightly. You need permits for just about everything up there. That Look, they're all pretty easy to get, but the fact of the matter is, without the permits, you are very restricted in what you can do up there. Why have they got them? I believe it's there to control crowd numbers and to make sure that areas aren't getting overused. Does it work? Yeah, it does. It 100% does work, but it is extremely limiting in what you can and can't do up there if you don't have the correct permits. Do I agree with it? Look. I'm hard pressed to say I don't agree with it because it works. The place is pristine. It's it's one of the last untouched frontiers in Australia. What I don't like about it is that it's not as free, I guess, as it used to be to get around up there. It's a little tricky to do the things you used to be able to do, but definitely worthwhile getting all your ducks in a row and heading out to Arnhem and checking the place out. But please do your research before you get out there. We heard stories of people that didn't do any research, drove all the way out to Mullumboy, got there, didn't have camping permits, literally had to turn around and drive the 700 k's back again because they had nowhere to stay. Um, so do your research and Arnhem Land will give back as much as you put in. But that's why they've got so many permits up there at the moment, Jocko. 
Mate, that sounds like, as you said, it could be a hot topic of its own. And, uh, you yeah. know, it's important to do the right thing, particularly when you're going to amazing places like that. So, as you say, yep. do the research. And, yep. uh, yeah, and definitely don't let it stop you from going there, too. It's oh, no. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Just do your research first, mate. So, on to a question for you from Mr. Carl Sutton. Yep. Um, yep. He says, do you let the air out of your trailer tyres, too? Uh, he's probably talking about off-grid and the vans that we're towing behind us. The quick answer there, mate, is yes, we do. Um, it's... Look, it's a bit of a controversial one, um, but the, the quick answer is yes, I do let air out of the van tyres as well. Um, not quite as much as I do out of the vehicle tyres because I'm not sitting in the van. I'm not quite as concerned about ride comfort in the van as I am in the vehicle, but at the same time, I don't want that bad boy shaking up on me beers, etc., etc. So yes, Carl, short answer is yes, I do let the air out of my van tyres as well. Very good. Folks, thank you so much for all those questions. We've, uh, like I said, we could be here for days answering mm -hmm. all your questions, so we tried to get a bit of a cross section there and did as much as we could without taking uh, literally hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're gonna throw now to a mate of ours um, over on the Goldie there, young Sean Whale. If you guys are looking to upgrade your suspension, now is the perfect time because Fulcrum are offering 50% off their click and fit. So that means you can jump online, click on click and fit, and you'll get 50% off the installation of a brand new Formula 4x4 suspension kit. It's the same suspension I run on all my rigs. And I'll tell you what, it's taken me to some amazing places in this great country of ours. So do yourself a favor, jump into fulcrumsuspensions.com.au. This offer ends October 23. Yep, Sean, sure, that is a cracking deal to be sure, mate. I've got another one, Jocko. I've got a cracker here as well, mate. Full of deals. Now, I reckon yeah, full, we are full of deals, mate. If you're going to go out bush, it doesn't matter what kind of wheeling you're doing. At some point, you're going to get stuck. It's just the nature of the beast, mate. Mm -hmm. And I reckon having good recovery gear is essential. not something you should take too lightly. It's essential, mate. Absolutely essential. I reckon max tracks and recovery gear should be in every four-wheel drive. I've got a couple of cracking deals right now, mate. Max Tracks Snatch Recovery Bundle. They were 709 bucks. They're now 494. And you get yourself a half price Snatch Recovery Bundle with that. If you want to upgrade those Max Tracks ever so slightly, though, mate, to the extremes, 896 is what it would have cost you. But right now, 681 bucks. And of course, like I said before, you still get yourself a half price Snatch Recovery Bundle with that, mate. So you're saving a bunch of cash there. Chuck those in the back of the Forby, mate. Head bush and know that you'll get yourself out of trouble most occasions, mate, I'd say most occasions. Of course, mate, now is the part of the show where we go from our shed to yours and we get to share our four drive obsession with you guys. We're gonna be looking <coughs> at some rigs and fails and of course, hearing from you guys from what you're getting up to out in the tracks and in the shed. But first things first, mate, let's have a look at one of my favorite parts, the fails. Let's get straight into it. Yeah, mate. This is from, uh, this is from Patrick Reese. Mm -hmm. He sent a photo of his Ranger uh, hanging off the edge of uh, what looks to be one of the biggest potholes in Australia. And he says, is that the back of Fink? I found it too. What he's referring to there, mate, you might not have seen it. Uh, both myself and especially Stefan Harley uh, fell into a massive washout whilst we were on the Fink, uh, causing us to nearly roll the vans and total the, it would have totaled the vehicles as well. Uh, and it looks like old Patrick here has found the exact same pothole. Uh, it's got a drainage pipe underneath it. Um, I hope you got out of there okay, because it took us quite a bit of maneuvering but yes Patrick you fell in the exact same hole we did so mate we have shared we've shared a fail yep. there you go well it's good to know mate that it's gotten not just you guys stuck out there but uh, at least now you've raised awareness to that hole so if you're out the back of Fink keep an eye out for it and don't drive into <laughs> keep it keep an eye out for it mate exactly this, this next exactly. one uh, what's going on here from Rocket I am new to beach driving but pretty sure this is not smart well I can tell two things from this no. photo uh, yeah, yep. you're definitely new to beach driving. And uh, the second thing is, yeah, definitely not the smartest thing. There's some salt water. That looks like a new Ranger as well, mate. And it's down to the chassis rails in salt she water um, with the jet ski sitting there. The Ford exactly. Ranger and jet ski combo, mate. It's, um, yeah. it's a license to print money, isn't it? Definitely. Now, this next one, Jocko. Every now and again, uh, we need to use a little bit of jangle, a little bit of right boot, a little bit of ascend it mode. And occasionally, that doesn't go so well. Mm -hmm. Have a look at this one here. Uh, Buffs Outback Adventures 4x4. This is from Instagram. A uh, little bit of a slippery climb coming up here, and then I reckon uh, a zag where there should have been a zig. Yep, I think and, so, mate. Uh, the old, yeah, the old tree's done the stopping for him. I think so, and it must be something with patrol drivers, mate, but uh, you, uh, you probably oh, be able to simplify. You You've run into a few trees in your time, <laughs> haven't you, mate? <laughs> I've had the occasional little whoopsie, mate. I've had, don't you worry about that, but uh, 
Hey, let's just uh, name the name this track straight up without even without even a moment's hesitation. Where is this vehicle? And easy, where is this track? easy, mate. From Jurassic Zoo, that looks like the bottom a little red. It is indeed the bottom a little red. And I've seen a few mishaps there, mate. Yeah, I've even I in, tell you how I know where that is because I've done a very similar thing in my highlights. Back right tire into that hole. You uh, pick up a wheel and yep. say hello to the people who are standing on the bank watching <laughs> you. But he's got the winch sign up. I reckon he'd be back and driving little red straight after that, just having a little nap. Plenty of winch trees mm -hmm. just off to the left there mm -hmm. too, so he'll be fine, mate. Where is this little spot here? You'll know this one I know here. This, this must one be. Too, uh, mate. This must be. Yeah, where, where is this? This is on the looks like it's on the power lines trail power in line Lithgow there, yeah. and. Uh, Yep. Judging by the photo on the right there, it looks like he's come down in between the two lines and then slipped into that hole and flipped over as a result being the photo on the left. So, um, yeah, I yes. guess it's one of those things where line choice is imp important, mate, and perhaps he's kind of gone in between <laughs> them or it's he slipped maybe. It does look quite wet there, so not ideal. It's but, all uh, gone horribly pear-shaped though, hasn't it? It went from, it went from looking okay to um, let me just get on my lid for a bit and do a skid. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, there, Anyway, Jack. There is a snatch trap well there, done. so maybe he had a recovery and then that happened after. Is that before or after? Well, maybe that's after. Yeah, You're don't right. know. Yeah, maybe that's after. So he's been pulled who's, back over. Who's to say? He's got a smile on his face. Jack, mate. in the comments, he's still laughing. He doesn't mind. In the comments down below, Jack, let us just know what happened there. But uh, it's a bit it's a bit of a mystery. It's a mm -hmm. little bit of a mystery. Mm -hmm. Now, Jocko, as with everything we do on Beers in the Shed, there's got to be winners. There's got to be winners and prizes. So we're going to pick a failer, an absolute failer. The best failer, is that even a word? Failer? It is now. The failer. He's going to get a 4X, a failer, yeah. He's going to get a 4X merchandise pack, mate, which is a fishing shirt. You're going to get a hat and a couple of stubby coolers. Now, I'm going to let you pick our fail of the week, mate. It's all up to you. Well, mate, uh, for me, my pick's going to be Jack Wade at the end there, mate, because uh, whilst he's, you know, had the recovery with the snatch strap that hasn't gone quite right, at least with a 4X merchandise pack, mate, he'll be able to get into a bit of fishing uh, while he fixes the full drive because <laughs> it probably needed a bit of work after uh, it tipped over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, well, there you go, Jack. Who said that failing doesn't bring wins? Even better than fails, although I must admit, fails are one of my favourite things to look at, is uh, looking at a good rig. And I know you're a big fan of checking out a good rig, mate. I do you'll, love uh, a good rig. You'll, you'll get under one. I do, yeah, mate. You'll get under one, you'll get on top of one, you'll have a good sniff around one. <laughs> I will. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, <laughs> we have got some crackers this week. Starting off, what do you, what do you, think, what do you think of these builds? 76. They look top heavy to me, mate. It, yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, the old 76. This is, this is, I think Alex. 76 is when built right, are really, really cool vehicles. This one looks quite yep. tall. And I mean, I don't know it how does. tall Alex is there in that photo there with his lean with his vehicle. But I will say this though, mate, it is Go. beautiful. That is a oh, beautiful Im Im vehicle. Immaculately built. Mm -hmm. It is immaculately built. Uh, it's, uh, would I want to punt it up Little Red? Probably not. Would I want to take it to Cape York? 100% yep. I would. Yep. 100% I would. It's that kind of vehicle, if you ask me. Definitely, definitely. Oh, speaking of dream, dream catchers. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Living, not dreaming. Uh, the, the, even That's the Instagram it, handle um, suits the vehicle, mate. Troopy living. That Does. thing is beautiful. And judging by the coil springs at the front and that front grill, I'm going to take a rough guess. And I might be wrong here, but it yep. looks like an HDJ78, which means it would have a 1HD FTA, FTE in it. Um, by the looks of things, it might have a 1HZ, but uh, if it does have the FTE, then that is a beautiful touring rig that will go anywhere and it looks super clean and it looks like they use it, mate. So uh, really hat does. off to them because that is a beautiful troopy, I reckon. Yeah, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Do you know I used to have a troopy back in the day? Yeah. Not I, many people I, know that. It was back when you were around surfing, bro. You were, uh, you know, living that nomad yeah, life. Bruh. And, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I loved it. Wish I'd never got rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, yep. bro. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bro. Uh, oh, here's me, mate, Brownie. Yep. Uh, he's from WA, this fella. Um, he is. I actually, I actually suggested, I said to him, don't chop your uh, GU in half. Uh, he wouldn't take no for an answer. And he did that in his back. He literally just in his shed at home. Mm -hmm. uh, took him only a couple of weeks. He built that tray all himself. Did the whole thing himself in his shed. And I got to say, he reckons he had a fair bit of rust out the back of it. Mm -hmm. um, I never saw that. Uh, but yeah, he literally took the angle rider to it one Friday afternoon with a couple of beers. Uh, built the tray and then did the rest himself, um, the canopy. And look at it, it's yeah. it's immaculate. It's It really is a work of art. The guy, to say, you know, he, we, we sort of say, these shed bills sometimes don't come out looking that crash hot. This one, she's immaculate, mate. So, Brownie, yeah. absolute legend, man. Mate, I follow this guy on Instagram too, and I have to say it's probably one of the nicest GU chops I've seen. It's um, He's yeah. done a yep. cracker of a job. And speaking of nice vehicles on this next page, whether you are a Hilux fan or not, this one not. is from, <laughs> <laughs> from or not on Instagram. <laughs> and, mate, that is a beautiful Hilux. Look at that. It's just... He's got yeah, like color-coded uh, yeah. barrel, quite a little bit, or is it black there? And he's got yep. a muzz bar at the front, big tires. 
Looks like he gets out and uses it, mate. That is a very clean Luxy. And, it looks uh, tough. It really does look like he uses it, mate. Mate, that is a beautiful highlight. Well done. Whether you like them or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, exactly. Yeah. Oh, here we hey, go. Here's, here we go. Here's a mate of ours, old Maxi Rhodes. Maxi um, Rhodes. Maxi, Maxi works, uh, well, he lives and breathes Land Cruisers, and he's been working on this, I know for a fact, for absolutely bloody ages. And it, I mean, look at it, it is immaculate. Beautiful. He's done, yeah, he's done an absolutely cracking job on that. And he gets out and uses it too. I was, uh, I followed him on Instagram and he, uh, I just saw him do his, his maiden voyage in it and um, everything went well, it just worked. Good on him, good on him. Well, mate, of course, there are some absolute rigs there from touring troopies through to big, tough Hiluxes, Chop to use, and of course, that immaculate yep. 40 series. But there can only be one winner for this one. And uh, I picked the fails, mate, so you pick the rigs. Well, who's your pick? Ah, okay. Well, look, WA boy, I mean, he's going to Brownie with his chopped GU patrol. Yeah. Brownie's got it. He's taken out the win, mate. Look, I don't even know him, mate, but I have to say, even just looking at that <laughs> uh, GU, it's uh, he's done an outstanding job with yeah. it. A lot of hours gone into it and definitely deserves uh, a little 4X merchandise pack, mate, because that is unreal. He does, and mate. of course, he does. if you guys yeah. want to enter your four drives in the rigs or the fail section, all you need to do is hashtag four drive 24 seven rigs on Insta or TikTok. Of course, yep. you can also share it on our official Facebook group, mate. Whilst we're on that topic there, Jocko, it means the world to us folks at home. If you could just hit that little subscribe icon for us, it means that we can keep growing the channel. The more we grow the channel, the more content you guys get. That's about it for beers in the shed for us this week. It is, mate. It, is, it has been an absolute pleasure. What are you going to do now? Go for a fish or something? What's the plan? Mate, I've got the boat ready to rock and roll. It's, uh, we've got virtually no wind outside this afternoon, so I think I might try and get out and catch a couple of King George Whiting whilst I've still got a bit of time off. And then you and I, mate, I think it's uh, pretty close to this time in a week or so. We're going to be heading down to Adelaide for the Adelaide Four Wheel Drive Show. Mate, I can't wait to share a beer with you in person there, but it's been an yep. absolute Pleasure as always, and thank you to you guys at home for watching what we do, all your questions, all your submissions yep. for rigs and fails, everything you guys do to make what we do possible. Thank you so much. And Graham, mate, I'll see you in Adelaide, but uh, I'll catch you next time. Beers on you in Adelaide, mate. I'll catch you down there and folks at home, see you out in the tracks. Hey, go and jump in your Forby this weekend and go for a drive. We'll catch us out there. I can't, I don't have a car that's running, but. <laughs> oh, anyway. that's true. <laughs> you get back into the shed, mate. I'll see you in Adelaide. <laughs> Coming up on Four Wheel Drive 24-7. Join us for an epic conclusion to our Simpson Desert adventure. With huge floods blocking our path ahead, leaving us stranded in the middle of one of the most remote destinations on the planet. We now face another 500 k's of big dunes and treacherous salt flats between us and the nearest fuel stop. Holy mackerel! Leave it to me to lift a wheel on a sand dune, eh? With dwindling supplies, fuel is gonna be, I reckon, that close. Mechanical dramas. Everyone's got a couple of gremlins in Nursen at the moment. He said, no, I can smell fuel back here. And a fresh rain front on the horizon. This adventure has just become a race to the finish line. Anything can happen. If we all go down, we'll go down together and this will be my life. There's not living. 